Dylan, we're, mm-hmm. I, I think I think we're doing this again. Are we doing this again? Sure. If that's what you okay. want to call it, I'm doing this again. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to It Came From The Internet. The Bear Conductor has summoned us once more to talk about a new topic. And I'm... Boy, howdy. <laughs> Isn't it new? I'm your host, David, and I'm joined here, as always, by Dylan to discuss things. Dylan, what are we discussing this week? Today we're discussing uh, the hottest take, the hottest topics that maybe we've ever discussed on this show. Uh, This is a turnaround of less than a week for us. Hot news. Hot news. Uh, So a little inside baseball on it came from the internet. Back in our early days, we were going to do an episode on Peter Coffin. And uh, we ended up not doing it because I kept waiting because I was like, it has to finish soon. And it never really did. And that was uh, a good learning experience. Because it showed me that there's no end to a lull cow. There's really just a, a narrative point where you stop caring. Uh, today's subject is both, he exemplifies that point, and he refutes it at the same time. He, because he today's, has... today's subject has an ending, but at the same time, there's no telling how deep his well goes. So we are taking a bit of a gamble doing this episode so soon after his end point. But uh, I think it's the right move to make. Because there's some things I want to say about this guy specifically. As I have spent the last couple days delving deep into his psyche. Sounds like a bad idea. But okay. Sounds like a bad idea. Most of my ideas aren't. They're not great. No, we do this podcast after all. That's true. Today we're going to talk about Randy Stair. uh, Known on the internet as Andrew Blaze. A 24-year-old supermarket attendant who last, hold on a second, of course, the one article I have up here doesn't bother to say when it happened. (laughs) Eastern June 8th. Last, it is, fuck, what day is it? It's the 15th of June. The 15th. This is about, last, fuck, how do I not know this? What's the date? <laughs> it's the... Uh, I don't know what... The, I honest to God don't know. Because no one fucking says it. Because they don't actually say when it happened. They just say, this happened recently. But they don't say how recently it happened. I hate the news so much, David. The news is so fucking retarded. Yeah. Yeah. So within the past end. month. Within the past week. Uh, mm-hmm. Last... Last... Thursday to last Friday. We're not 100% sure exactly what happened. Uh, Randy Stair walked into his place of work. Guns. Uh, He fired 59 rounds. He killed three of his former former co-workers. And uh, one of them got away before killing himself. I'm going to say that again. Hold on. Okay. It was all over the fucking place. Uh, Last Thursday to Friday, it happened around midnight, so it kind of went between the two of them. Uh, Randy Stair walked into a Weiss supermarket where he used to work. Two shots out of two shotguns and murdered three former co-workers before killing himself. Jesus fuck, man. Now, some of you at home are probably thinking, wait a minute. This is my low cow podcast. This isn't my true crime podcast. Because I know every one of you fucks does both. There's no way that Venn diagram is not just a flat circle of true crime and it came from the internet fans. It's just, it's one circle within another. Yeah, one's clearly better than the other. But Randy Stare is unique amongst spree killers because Randy Stare has a pretty large internet footprint that was un, largely untapped at the time of the attack. And it's 
a pretty amazing one. So let's talk about it. So who who was this this guy? Randy Stair, born. Hold on a second here. I have his birth date. Born September seventeenth, nineteen ninety two. Uh, was a antisocial young man who idolized. Uh, I'm gonna get these names wrong. Eric okay. Harris and Dylan Klebold. Oh no, you got them right. Okay, I was. I thought I was gonna get their first and last name swapped. That, that, uh, that the, is, that those are the Columbine shooters. Yes, the perpetrators of the Columbine High School massacre. The massacre that has uh, defined, I would say, uh, the. American education system more than any other single event. No, yeah, that's about right. It is an event that has placed a black mark on uh, anyone who is a teenager and angry, which is all teenagers, and is- has created, has built a sort of nanny state in the education system. Uh, not really to coddle these people, but in a weird way to insulate them, to further isolate them. Yep, I agree with that. Uh, most of which is based on a false narrative. So to understand Randy Stair, you have to understand things about Dylan Harris and Eric Klebold. There, I got the name wrong. Uh, one thing you have to understand about them is that the myth surrounding them, that they were bullied kids who were taking revenge upon their abusers, is complete fabrication. Yeah, no, they were, they were the bullies. They were uh, just two angry shithead kids who, they did get bullied occasionally, but they were just as, if not more, abusive to other students. Well, they... Andrew Harris was a real fucking scumbag, and Dylan Klebold was more of the follower. Eric Harris. Eric Harris, yeah, you're right. Yeah, but the point is, they had they had active social lives. They were fairly well-liked by their peers. Um, they had aggressive personalities, so they obviously butted heads with other students on occasion, but by most standards, the two of them were normal people. They were just angry shitheads who got off on the idea of hurting other people. And the thing about it is when you listen to like the actual accounts people have of the day, they seemed incredibly bored while they were perpetrating the massacre. Because they were sociopaths. <laughs> sociopaths, but beyond that... I think they just realize it's not that fun. It's the same reason why, like, the video game Hatred is not a good video game. Because it's not fun to mow down people. It's just not interesting. Like, there's a reason that, like, hunters will intentionally make the job harder on themselves. There's no sport in gunning someone down. Like, it's why the Predator fucking won't attack anyone who's sick. Did not expect, I did not expect to make uh, both a Predator reference and a, like, shit. What's that one book about the dude who, like, hunts man? Uh, the Most Dangerous Game. What? Most Dangerous Game. Whatever. I'm cutting all this out. <laughs> Don't cut it all out, asshole. I'm going I'm to cut, I'm gonna cut a big chunk of that out. That was awful. Point being, Eric Harris, Dylan Klebold are just bad dudes. They were horrible people. Uh, they were not marginalized. They were not striking back at society. That narrative that was built around them was built in the vacuum of their absence to try and create a boogeyman that we as Americans could fight back against. People, when killers kill themselves, there's no closure. And people will try to look at outside factors to blame for the killings. Yes. 
Uh, we see this with those two. It was specifically because uh, Eric and Dylan were big fans of Doom. So Doom got blamed for this for a while. Uh, that was yes, a big thing so in the early 2000s with Violent people blaming video games, yeah. Which we now, for the most part, science seems to have come to a consensus that either video games don't make us more violent or they make us less violent. There's really no evidence out there now to support the hypothesis that it makes us more aggressive. Yeah, there's nothing. And, uh... That's important to understand for who Randy Stair is. Because Randy Stair left a massive paper trail when he died. He uploaded 17 hours of suicide tapes to Mediafire. Jesus Christ. Uh, he also had someone, I think he might have done it himself and just left it on a timer to upload the tapes to his YouTube channel. Uh, which did get sh shut down a few days ago. How much of this did you watch? I watched about six hours of his tapes. Jesus Christ. Uh, those tapes are being uploaded on mirrors. There's one dude in particular who was like, yeah, I wanted to upload these because this dude was uh, a member of my Columbine fan form. Which right there. Uh. Says more about it says more than I think I can about the subject. Uh, so by the time this video goes up, completed and finished, you can probably go and find these tapes. I haven't listened to all of them, but I listened to the first six, and then I watched the videos that he took right before the attack. Uh, I think the last video he uploaded was him driving to the market before he would perpetrate the attack. Holy shit, man. Um, or it, it was like real, real close. It was like, if not right then, it was like a day before. Because um, the attack happened at midnight. He specifically targeted the overnight shift because he believed that if he uh, went in when the store was full, he wouldn't be able to kill himself comfortably and he also believed that he wasn't going to kill that many people anyway because he had really bad luck. You know there's going to be some dude in there with a gun or something. So, you know, I'm just going to go during the overnight shift when it's just a few people. So I don't have to worry about it. Which, like, uh, you're already going to go fucking kill people. You can't, you're not going to go in the middle of the day. He wanted you're going to puss him. out. He wanted to kill himself, you said. So he obviously didn't want to be murdered by someone else. He just, like, imagine that, like, imagine pussing out when you're that close. Wait, technically he didn't pussy out. He just... He's just such a wimp. That's a good, that's a good word to describe Randy Stair, is he's a wimp. He's got no spine. He's got no spine. He's got no tact. He's got no, this is going to sound really weird, but he's got no edge. He's the Which most weird for an edge lord. He's the most basic bitch spree killer I've ever heard about. Because <laughs> this is also important, listening to those tapes, is it's very apparent Randy has no original thoughts. He is parroting what he believed Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold believed. I see. Uh, namely, that society needed reformation. That we were falling to pieces and that we needed some sort of catastrophic event to get us back into the right gear. Then this was his catastrophic event? Yeah, killing three people in a supermarket. That was his catastrophic event. I want to point out, uh, this catastrophic event barely even made the news. Yeah, no, I didn't. I only heard about it because of you. I, uh, I had uh, talked to uh, one of my coworkers about it, and he had not heard about it. Uh, my mom had not heard about it. Most people just didn't hear about it. Because... 
he only killed three people, and there's a mass shooting every month. So who gives a shit? If it's not an Ariana Grande concert, I ain't got time for it, okay? <laughs> but you heard about him before he shot up people, right? No, no. I heard after he shot uh, people up. Uh, so okay. that's a good place to sort of start is how I came into knowing uh, Randy Stair slash Andrew Blaze. Uh, it was... It's hard to tell with my sleep schedule when these events happen. I think it might have been either Friday or Thursday night. Okay. And it was real, real late. Or it was like, it was like 6 in the morning, and I was like, all right, I'm going to go to bed. Uh, Mr. Medicare on Twitter... Uh, who you may know formerly as the Internet Aristocrat. I think we're at the point now more people know him as Mr. Medicare, but I figured I'd drop that I didn't in realize there. they were the same person. So. Okay. He had been posting some weird clips to his Twitter, and he finally posted a link to the full video. I think he wanted to archive it before he sent a link out there in case it got taken down. Which it did, but it didn't get taken down for like three more days, so he was safe. Uh, and when he uploaded it, when I realized what it was, I put off going to sleep. And me and some guys in the Discord uh, watched the full 40-minute video that is Randy Stair's suicide tape. His real final contribution to his channel, the Westboro High Massacre. That's what the video's called? That's what the video's called. Did, did he live in a place called Westboro, or is it a reference to the church? Uh, so he lives in Dallas, Pennsylvania, but I believe Westboro was the name of his high school. Oh, okay. Uh, so the Westboro High Massacre is probably the most well-known of Andrew Blaze's videos. If you ever find an Andrew Blaze video, it's probably going to be that one. It's surreal, to say the least. Uh, you know how every movie trailer now opens with like a slow, sad cover of a pop song? Yes. Not that just movies, games too. Games too. Um, that's how his fucking final video opens, with a sad rendition of American Idiot. Ugh. The Green Day song. It's... Uh, Followed by, do you know that Gwen Stefani song? Mm. Uh, fuck. No, because she has a lot of songs, Dylan. Like, I've, I'm feeling good, and I'm going to keep on dancing. That's the chorus. I think so. Okay. Is like her on a jet ski around like a ship. Okay. I saw that video in a Hot Topic when I was like eight, and it, was, it left this surreal impression on me. So is the video surreal or is it surreal because of, of the weird songs included in it? Well, uh, both. Uh, first off, that song, while it's kind of like dark and droning, is not a violent song at all. It's a party song. So the fact that he decided to put this in his Massacre manifesto is very bizarre. Uh, it plays over long shots of like his room that I think are supposed to give the impression of, like, his planning, you know? Like, you know how, like, in detective movies? Or, like, you know how, like, in a Punisher movie, there'll be, like, a cork board, and it'll slowly pan over all the... the with uh, all the yarn connecting things. Yeah, and all the, all the dudes that he's killed yeah. on the board. They did that in Deadpool, too. They actually, they do it in, at the start of Tekken 7, oddly enough. But that's what it's supposed to give the impression of, but it's just My Little Pony posters. That's weird. There's, there's no actual, like, connecting thread or anything sinister to denote what's happening here. If you only saw that sequence without knowing the video title or who made it, it would make no sense. It would just be surreal. It sounds like it's, it's just from the, the Brony documentary. It does. Um, because the song kind of sounds sinister at first, but the lyrics aren't. 
and the visuals aren't sinister at all. So it's the, it's very strange, and it's the whole song. I don't think he cl he quits midway through. Uh, this moves into a sequence of still images of the characters together as like at a Dutch angle when it's like askew slightly and then zooming in onto them. Uh, a voiceover happens and it's like two voices and it, I think it's supposed to give the impression of the bullying the characters went through because it's like, oh, Angie, you're such a fucking fag. And I'll Rachel you who are stuff like that. Okay. Uh, the problem is the zoom is too fast. So by the end of the sequence, it's like zoomed up into like a gap between the characters you can't actually see anymore. Uh, that sequence is like six minutes. It's kind of amazing. There's one sequence where it's just a character yelling at another one, like, I bet you should have cucumbers up your pussy, you freak. And she says it like six times in a row. And uh, the girl who says it is trying her damnedest. She is putting everything she has into yelling these lines. Probably in, like, her college dorm while her, like, roommate's in the other room. Just, like, so trying to sleep. <laughs> sounds come from these lines come from then uh there are two voices one of them is andrew himself the other one is a, a woman whose name i don't have uh I write it down but she is just a voice actor she has no direct connections to him she's not friends with him they didn't know each other oh my God, he just hired an actress for his suicide tape uh so here's the other thing is in fact, he tried to hire a lot of people for his suicide tapes. Uh, he wanted this whole thing to be animated, but no one he wanted to hire would do the job. And in fact, the video opens with probably a good three or four actual written pages of uh, like an angry letter to everyone who like fucked Refused who like fucked him, him over. Yeah. And when you're watching it, you're like, did he kill all these people in the supermarket because these dudes wouldn't draw his cartoon for him? Uh, th he did not. He had been planning to kill everyone in the market regardless. But I want to point out, what would have happened to like the small animation community on the internet had a bunch of these people worked on this project? And then we're like forever no, connected. What it to, was. Yeah, and then like are forever connected to this man's massacre. Well, I mean, it's 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 like when we just it, it's essentially like a like eighty times worse version of the people connected to Schmorky, right? Yeah, uh, I guess it'd be like if Schmorky instead of just having a breakdown and being a weirdo murdered some people. Yeah. Oh, well, it's child molestation. Uh, that did much of a lighter anyone? crime. I'm I'm positive he did. We don't okay. have proof of that, but I gu I guarantee there's some 16 year old who Smorky's had his fingers inside of. Okay. Well, then maybe Smorky's worse. Maybe. I don't know. I think child molestation is worse than murder. I think. I think maybe. I think so. I'm not sure. Contro I think so. A controversial take from David Reinhardt. Child <laughs> molestation worse than murder. Well, unless wor worse than regular murder, not worse than child murder. All right. Because you molest a child, you scar it for life, but you murder it, and then you just murdered it. <laughs> That's true. If you just murder a regular person, you just cut their life short. At least they weren't scarred. Now the, worst, the next the worst crime would be to molest a child and then get away with it and then before they like let them live to a ripe old age and then murder them. Like Bill Clinton did. <laughs> who did he murder that he molested? Oh, who I bet millions. 
<laughs> Millions. Okay. I tell you what, the federal government rapes my paycheck every time I get it. <laughs> Moving on. The fucking liberal <laughs> scum. Anyway. Uh, so the next sequence of the video is incredibly surreal because it's the actual animated attack of uh, Andrew, who's a man in this sequence. And Rachel Selinsky, who is his weird uh, original character waifu. Wait, I who, thought uh, Andrew is a man. Andrew is a man. Okay. But in stick with this. Just stick with me okay. here, all right? Okay. It's a lot to take in. I'm trying to give you the same experience I had trying to understand this. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm here. So... Andrew's uh, lady friend looks an awful lot like a Danny Phantom character. Or to notice that. Uh, the next sequence is not finished. It's all like animatics and half animated, but it's the two of them uh, shooting up their school Columbine style uh, before eventually killing themselves. So is this animated or is it just still images? It's it's partially animated. Like he was trying to animate it all himself, but he ran out of time. Uh, it was very important to him that the attack take place when it did. On that specific day. Yes. Uh, and I got to be completely honest with you. I don't really know why. I know he made a big deal of it happening on the day. I wasn't quite able to find out why. Okay. I assume it's, uh, I assume it had something to do with Columbine. But is, Columbine isn't, was it, it's the summer. It wasn't. Columbine is, uh, in, is, uh, on 420. Right. Yes, I knew that. He was originally going to do it in September. I think he wanted to do it on either Eric Harris's birthday or Dylan Klebold's birthday. Okay. Um, it was He was going to do it in September, but then he moved it up to uh, June because he had the night shift or something. Uh, I think he... I don't exactly know. I think, Unfortunately, I didn't far enough into his tapes to find out why he moved the date up so much. I can only assume his plans accelerated or and he was able to get enough money to carry out his plans sooner. Okay. And so he just decided to happen earlier. I don't want to know. He died. Okay, so Dylan Klebold was born September 11th. That's an unfortunate date. Whew, that is an unfortunate date. Christ. And uh, Eric Harris was born April 9th. So I don't know why he decided on June 8th it, or June 7th. 7th? It was the 7th? Yeah. It was either the 7th or the 8th. And honestly, it could be both. Because again, it happened at midnight. It happened at like 1245, I believe, was the time I had seen. Okay. But I imagine like he might have shown up there at mid. It's 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 semantics. It's not actually important. It happened in early June. Um. Actually, hold on one second here. I might know why it happened then. Sorry, I know this is dead air, but let me double check this. You're editing this, so whatever. I am editing this, but we're here in the moment. We are here in the moment. I'm excited for for horror. I assume maybe it's Ember McLean's birthday, but who? Oh, I'll get to her. <sighs> so the last like twenty minutes of the video is it's incredibly surreal because it's. It's Andrew Blaze trying to give like an uplifting speech about hu how humanity needs to come together to better themselves. Well, we know that's not going to happen. We we voted for it's, Trump. 
it's incredibly bizarre and surreal. I know I've said that a whole lot. And I couldn't parse any of it. Like, I was watching it with other people, and none of us were able to make sense of it. Well, I mean, boring. Like, considering it's, like, his, his big finish, it's really fucking boring. Well, aren't most suicide notes bad? Uh, yeah, I guess. I don't read a whole lot of suicide notes. But I suppose they I suppose most of them aren't particularly good. Also with the discovery that Andrew was a lol cow, like wouldn't you expect him to just like babble basically? So that's uh one important thing I wanted to bring up is uh Andrew was very good at expressing himself. At least in the tapes he was. Uh, the tapes are very recent. The first of the suicide tapes happens in December of 2016. He's okay. very eloquent. He gets his point across fairly well. Uh, there's some dead spots here and there, but altogether, he's pretty good at public speaking. It's better than we are, certainly. Uh, and because of that, I don't think... I do not think Andrew Blaze is autistic, which is something a lot of people have said uh, with what we know, that they think, like, well, he has to be autistic to do does. I don't think he is. I don't think he's autistic. I don't think he's bipolar. I think he's is too... making blatant statements that school shooters are autistic? No. Uh, this is separate from that. Uh, and here in a wow. second, you'll understand why. But I do not believe Andrew Blades is autistic. I think he's too eloquent for it. If he is autistic, he's very, very low on the spectrum. Or high, okay. I guess. He would be higher than he'd be higher than Chris Chan is, basically. So I don't it would not have been a huge factor. So the video ends. And I'm tired, I go to bed. I wake up later that day, and uh, we I start looking a little more into it. And at this point, it's 2 o'clock on Friday, I believe. Uh, it might be 2... No, I think it's 2 o'clock on Saturday, because I think I was playing I was playing Tekken. Okay. But this was last... No, this could have been Friday. It doesn't matter when it was. Um, there's not a Kiwi Farms thread. There's not an 8chan thread for it yet. All we really have are people on Twitter in some threads on 4chan talking about it. Okay. Uh, so so that's this... Unusual, it, right? That's unusual for... I, we've never been this close to something starting. Okay. Uh, and I, I believe I just go back to the channel because I want to see some of his other videos. At this point, knowing Andrew Blaze is in fact uh, a... That he is a man, that he did kill however many people, and whatnot. So do you know him as Andrew Blaze, or as uh, whatever, Randy Stare? I know, I know him as Andrew Blaze. His birth name is Randy Stare, but at some point, he started to go by Andrew Blaze. It's unclear if he went by that in his normal day-to-day -day life, or if he only went by that on the internet. Uh, all the actual press articles refer to him as Randy Stare. Referred to as Andrew Blades in an internet context. Okay. Uh, so at this point, suicide tapes are up. All 17 hours. And at that point, what I'm imagining is Randy Stare had like a small circle of friends who helped him do this. And that in the next few weeks, they are all going to be arrested. And I, that's what I'm thinking in my head. That very soon, this is going to blow up into, like, not a Manson-level cult, but a Manson-style cult. What was the, um, the, the David whatever story? It was, remember, they made a movie out of it about the guy who committed suicide to make a point, or who, um got arrested and put to death on death row to make a point? 
for a crime he was innocent of? <sighs> I know who you're talking about. It's the one the uh, Tool song is based off of. Yeah. Hey man, nice shot. I don't know what his actual name is, but I know who you're talking about. No, 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 hey, no, 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 no. That's different. Oh. You're thinking of the, the the corrupt senator who was found out and killed himself live on the air. Yeah, I think that's the same guy. No, I'm talking about the guy. It was a guy. I, I think it was based on a real story. It might have just been a movie, but it was like a guy who um, basically got convicted of murdering someone, but was innocent the whole time and was put like on death row and put to death, but he was innocent. <laughs> And, like, the details came out after. I have no idea. I don't know. I, I don't really... I don't quite see... I, I guess I kind of see what you're talking... The connection here. Because you think... Yeah, like, I... Well, oh, that was the other thing, is, like, the reveal was, is it was, like, it wasn't... There was, like, it was all this planned thing, like, to make a statement, basically. Oh. That's weird. Yeah. No, I was I was thinking that like he had friends who were helping him do these things and they knew or maybe they didn't directly know, but they were like able and that in the next few weeks to months the news cycle was going to get a hold of this and it was going to become a huge thing. I thought we were going to find out like we were going to have like the Slenderman trial again where it's like it's putting the entire internet on trial. Or not even necessarily the entire internet, but just like a group psychosis. And where does the blame actually land when someone kills someone? No, and you don't try to get them help, or if you egg them on, are you as responsible as they are? Like I said, because like, that's what happened with Manson. He didn't kill anyone. He facilitated it. Yeah, he directed them. Yeah. Uh, that's what I was expecting. That turns out not to be the case. Uh, Randy did not have any assistants or any perpetrators. Uh, the people that helped him to produce his content didn't know his internal plans. And many of them were just hired. They really didn't have any interest in Randy. They didn't really care about him or uh, his plans. Working artists. Most, at least... Yeah, at least one of them, at least the voice actress, came out publicly and said, I'm not, fi I'm not friends with Randy Stair. Uh, I only knew him professionally, and I'm absolutely shocked and horrified that I'm connected to this in any way, uh, as you do. Yeah. Uh, we watched some more of Randy's videos. They are fucking... Um reasonably well animated considering he did them himself. Basically, the idea is Andrew Stair sorry, fuck. Andrew Blaze is his character in his series. He is a ghost woman who is part of Ember's Ghost Squad. And Ember's Ghost Squad are these sort of agents of chaos that, uh, just sort of go around and fuck with people, I guess. That seems to be what they do. Okay. There doesn't really seem to be much more to them outside of that. Um, and now that I'm actually saying it, I never actually thought to look up what their actual purpose is. I don't think they have one. Now that I think about it, I think they're supposed to just be like a law of the universe, sort of like how water doesn't have a purpose, it just sort of forms. You know? Yeah. I, and like, but I don't think they have like a sated reasoning, or a sated uh, point. Okay. The, re the reason they're called Ember's Ghost Squad is uh, because David, did you ever watch a little show called Danny yeah, Phantom? Danny Phantom, I'm I understand, but please explain for the audience. Uh, in the TV show Danny Phantom, which is created by Butch Hartman, who also made Fairly Odd Parents, I think he made some other shows too. He made one about a dog superhero. Oh, he's responsible for Underdog. No, not Underdog. I just sent him a thank you note. It's 
not underdog. Underdog, super oh. old, dumbass. A box of chocolates or something. It doesn't really matter. Basically, what Danny Phantom is, is Danny Phantom's basically just uh, Batman Beyond Spider-Man. If it was Batman. At how all the Batman Beyond villains are just Spider-Man villains. You think it threw him in your head, aren't you? All, all the Batman Beyond villains I remember are either Batman villains or I don't remember them. There's, uh, his arch nemesis is uh, a CEO of an evil corporation who like turns into a monster like the Green Goblin. There's a character who uh, has no powers but manipulates people with hypnotism. Like, uh, Mysterio. There's a sound power dude like the Shocker. There's uh, a creature with earth powers like Sandman. Uh, there's an electric guy in the comics. They're all just Spider Man villains. If you ever look it up, you'll be amazed. Like, they just straight up stole Spider Man villains. It's kind of amazing how brazen it is. Uh, Danny Phantom's not a great show. It's pretty stupid. Uh, the basic premise is that Danny. Fenton is the son of two ghost hunters, and he accident and they are trying to build a portal to uh, the afterlife. And he's accidentally inside the portal when he uh, when he turns it on, and he uh, gains the powers of a ghost. Okay, you don't have to explain all of Danny and Phantom, do you? I, I feel like I feel like I do. I feel like I do. Just set this up. I don't uh, and then he fights are bad. Just explain it to set it up. It's basically just like a normal superhero show, but all the superhero all the characters have like in their color palette. Uh, so one of Danny Phantom Phantom's reoccurring villains is a character named Ember McLean, who is a rock star who uses the power of music to hypnotize the masses. Uh, again, much like Mysterio hypnotizes people. Stop. Fuck off. That's true. Uh, so in 10th grade, young Randy Stair had a... I suppose what it really was was a sexual awakening to this character. But he misinterpreted it having like a past life experience. So he's another thinking, kid? No, he's not another kid. Not quite. Uh, he believes that it's kind of complicated. Uh, so he believes that when he dies, he will return to the squad. But he also believes that's where his soul was before he became human. That so what everyone is the squad exactly? Uh, David, I really wish you didn't ask that question. <laughs> The squad doesn't really have a defined term, but there seem to be more than one. I think the idea is everyone has, like, a tribe, like a soul tribe in the afterlife that they're a part of. Uh, and that's where you are originally, and then, like, you get sent to the living world, and you lose your... You, like, lose your fucking memories of the old world. And then when you die, you return to your tribe, your squad. I don't know why. Uh, that doesn't ever seem to be answered, why you come to the world of the living, uh, what you get out of being a living person, and there seemingly is no reason to be a living person. He does say at one point that if you hit 40, you're probably not going to be part of it. So maybe it's like... This is like a sorting hat for the afterlife, you know? Wait, but I thought you were I thought you were already part of the squad before you came to the world of the living. So I think the 
I this is all out of my ass. I think okay. the idea is when you like fuck up or you break some sort of ghost rule, they send you back to the world of the living and you have to like be resorted. And then you come back to the ghost squad. So what happens if you're over 40? Uh, you would just like you, you would end up die. in a di- you just go to like a different squad. Oh. Like, imagine if in Harry Potter they sorted you every year instead of just the first year. Which I feel like they should actually do now that I say it out loud. I don't... You should do the Harry Potter. Don't think about Harry Potter. It all falls apart. Shut up. I feel like that makes more sense. If you have to get resorted every year. Stop thinking. Stop it. (laughs) Wouldn't it be cooler if he had to be, like, in a different house every book? That'd be cool. He goes to Slytherin House one year, and everyone hates him. Just fucking focus on the topic at hand. How, how many people in a Slytherin House do you think have made trouser snake jokes at each other? You think that happens a lot there? Dylan, we're talking about a man that killed three people. Can, can we stay on topic a little bit? <laughs> it's on t- it's, I think it's important, but whatever. It is not him. Whether the, the the students of Slytherin House make constant penis jokes is not important. It's important to someone out there. I bet. Uh, so, there's a couple of things that he never addresses. Like, why does Butch Hartman know about Ember? And if he, w- presumably, if he was a member of the squad, how come he makes Ember such a minor character? Because don't get it twisted, Ember is not just a member of the Ghost Squad. She's the leader of the Ghost Squad. Uh, so are, like, all the ghosts in Danny Phantom members of different squads? Uh, are, is there, like, a fairy odd parent squad out there somewhere? Is there, like, a Metal Gear squad somewhere? These are questions he never seems to answer, and they're questions he never seems to ask. Uh, because he's not very smart. Like, a normal person philosophizing about the world looks at the world around them and they says, I don't think this makes a whole lot of sense. And then they try to figure out what it might actually be. Randy Stair just had this obtuse obsession with a cartoon character. And then he bent reality around to make it so that he would eventually live in that world. He's very similar to Chris Chan in that he has no... He has a poor understanding of the lines of reality. But where Christian literally believes in another dimension that these characters exist and they can interact with us, uh, Randy seemed to believe that he had to pass to the next world. I mean, th- this is very other Ken Dillon. It's very other kin, but he is not Ember McLean. He is his own person. Right, yeah. No, no, being so, soul bonded to a member, uh, to an, an original character of her squad. It is, it's similar, but it's similar in like how dinosaurs are similar to birds. They're not quite the same, but there's a lot of similarities between them. Yes. It's like that. I make that comparison a lot. I think I might have made that same comparison in every episode of the podcast. That di- it's like dinosaurs and birds. You really like Jurassic Park. I've watched I watch Jurassic Park probably about once a month. It's really good. I was watching it yesterday. I was supposed to watch Cowboy Bebop, but I couldn't hear it over the fan. So I just watched Jurassic Park because I've memorized the audio tracks. Wow. That's incredible. So you're probably wondering. Earlier I said that Andrew was a man in the one video 
And you said, isn't Andrew always a man? Yes, I did say that. Well, the answer, David, is yes. But the answer is also no. Okay. Andrew believed his soul was feminine. He believed that when he died, when he passes into the afterlife, he becomes a woman. But he so was in his little cart... Yes. So in his cartoons, he himself will voice his character, who's clearly a woman, and just has his fucking mid-twenties ed edgelord voice coming out of it at the whole fucking time. Is that also why the character is named Andrew Blaze? Yes, although you'd figure he would uh, come up with a more feminine name for his alter ego, because Andrew is, I believe, specifically a female. It's, it's, uh, fuck. A ma it is a male name, yes. Yeah, it's exclusively a male name. So you figured he could at least call himself, like, Sandy or something. Yes. Uh, I do want to take a quick moment here to say... Andrew Blaze has a lot of parallels to Jerry Pete. Like, a lot. Uh, they're both bronies. They're both transsexual. They're both obsessed with cartoons for kids. Uh, they both really hate Donald Trump. They're both really aggressive uh, in language and in basically everything else about their lives. And they're both very smug. Uh... I'm not saying Jerry Pete will eventually become Andrew Blaze, and I don't think he will, but I think if Jerry lived in a more rural place and he actually learned how to use guns, I'm pretty sure Jerry would be a spree killer. Okay, then. <laughs> I mean, I guess presenting Just wanted to say evidence that. like this. You watch them back to back, you'll be amazed how similar they are. Uh, so this is kind of the inner workings of the Ghost Squad. They just seem to come to Earth to fuck with people and kill people. And a few times, Andrew seems to imply the Ghost Squad are responsible for death as a concept. That all death is caused by the Ghost Squad. They are like the Grim Reapers. Um, so when they kill someone, they are then accepting them into the squad. Uh, outside of that, presumably other squads also do the same thing, but it's hard to tell. He doesn't ever go into whether or not there are other squads. At least not as far as I can tell. He's not really interested in talking about them. Whew. Hmm. So with that said, that's roughly the inner workings of the Ghost Squad. That's roughly how that whole thing goes together. I think it's important to now talk about the tapes. Uh, the 17 hours of tapes that I watched probably about half of altogether. Um, I didn't watch them all, but I don't think I have to. I think I got the gist of it. And I wanted to take a moment to sort of dispel some of the assumptions people kind of have about Randy, uh, about who he is, and about what he needed in life. Okay. Uh, so let's go down the checklist, David. What do people usually say when there's a spree killer? What do they usually go to? Uh, mental illness. Okay. Randy Stare has no mental illnesses. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know if you can say that with what you've just told me. I think like that is one hundred percent deep disconnect from reality. I don't think it was. Because when listening to Randy talk, he is lucid. He is... I, I don't... He has... What he has done... You can be is delusional he has, and lucid. He, he knows what he's doing is wrong. 
He's not insane. And by his own definition of reality, he didn't have to kill these other people. He wanted to. Even if we assume that he believes with 100% certainty that this whole Ember Ghost Squad shit is true, which I don't think he did. I think he knew it was horse shit. I'm positive that Andrew was well aware what he was saying was nonsense, and he just wanted to say it anyway. Even with all that, he didn't have to kill the people in the supermarket to get into the Ghost Squad. Uh, and the other thing is two of the people he killed were over his weird cutoff date of 40 years old. So it wasn't like he was bringing them into his ghost squad with him or anything. He just wanted to cause pain to other people before he killed himself. Well, isn't, isn't even that the sign of mental illness? So here's a couple things uh, that I've discovered in some research I've done for another episode. Intent. Is this, is this uh, the own, own episode? Whatever, I don't know how to pronounce the guy's name. So sociopathy is not a mental illness. It is not a diagnosis, period. There is no medical definition for sociopathy. It is just something we say someone has a general disconnect from the rules of society. But it is not a medical diagnosis. There is not a chemical makeup that you can test for that means someone is likely sociopathic. Okay. Um, they're the only disorder, and I already said earlier, I don't think he's autistic because he's too eloquent for it. The only disorder Randy Stair would believably have would be a personality disorder that causes him to, in general, just disconnect from people. None of that would explain his incredible rage and none of that would explain why he would feel the need to go on a killing rampage. Okay. When someone with a mental illness goes on one of these attacks, it is a progressive, it is progressive breaks in reality. It's one break in reality. I got to get a gun. I got to get a gun so I can protect myself from the demons and then lucidity. Like, all right, there's no demons, but I have the gun, and I, could, I need a gun anyway. And then it's, I gotta get a ton of ammo because the war is coming. It's lucidity. All right. There's no war coming, but it's fine. Then it's, I gotta go and I gotta kill all these people because they're clones or some shit. And then it's just, they're so disconnected from reality, and they have everything they need, and they're so impulsive, they go and they do their attack. Okay. That's what a, that's how a crazy person shoots up a school. A crazy person believes that the kids at the school are not really there. They believe they're aliens or they're clones or they're being held captive and killing them is the only way to stop it. They believe they're Randy Savage, not Randy Savage. They believe they're fucking what's his face and uh they live. Uh a uh, uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Ra yeah, they believe they're a Rowdy Roddy Piper. Rod fuck. Idiot. They believe they're Roddy Piper. They believe the Rowdy Roddy Piper that they are seeing reality for what it truly is, and now they're gonna fight back against it. Because in that movie, he just the moment he learns there are aliens, he just picks up a gun and shoots up a bank. That's exactly what a crazy person does when they actually have their breaks in reality. But it's subsequent. They have the breaks. And as they have the breaks, they are accumulating materials until finally the day comes and they're so impulsive and they're so sick, they don't realize what they're doing is wrong. So what you're saying is, is as, as someone else who, of course, you, you've talked about how our audience crosses over with true crime podcast audiences, uh, Randy Stair never had a childhood brain injury. No, he did not have, as far as I know, Randy Stair did not have... Uh, any significant abuse in his childhood? He did not seem to have... Your dog's fucking up our recording, David. You son of a bitch. Einstein is, is barky. Hold on. We'll, we'll just hold for a moment. Okay, we can go now. All right. Randy Sarah did not have any sort of significant brain injury. He did not have any sort of significant uh, chemical imbalance... He believed he was a transsexual, 
but he didn't want to undergo hormone therapy because he believed that when he was going to die, he was going to become a ghost anyway. So what was the point? So, in fact, Randy okay. was fundamentally against any medication at all because it be he believed it would fundamentally alter who he was, and he didn't want that to happen. Can, can, can we go back to the thing that kind of started this conversation in this? Because you said, like, people found out about him. I don't remember if this was on the air or not. Through a, I think it had to have been, but through a Columbine fan forum, like... So not Eric not Harrison, quite. Dylan Klebold, Klebold were just horrible people. They were. They were horrible people, and that's the analog I want to be here. Neither of them was sick. No. They weren't like. They didn't have psychotic episodes and then shot up their school. They planned for months to years to do this. Uh, Randy Starr is exactly the same. He was planning this consecutively at least since December, and there's some evidence to support that he might have been planning it since 2015. Well, December... Oh, wow. Okay. So he was planning for at least, at minimum, seven months to do this. No one has a psychotic episode for seven months. No. Like, no one has a break from reality that lasts that long. And... That's one of the points I wanted to make, is this is too well sent to be the work of a crazy person. Crazy people don't construct these things after such a long amount of time. When you're crazy, you don't really have a whole lot of focus. So, which is why the the... So, so basically, I feel like what you're saying is, is we found the next generation of the Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris, whereas, like, they, they planned all that shit, but Randy Stair constructed a lol cow background to explain his actions post-event, despite it all being, con it's a construction, basically, is what you're telling me. It, it sounds like what you're telling me. Randy Stair most likely had a personality defect that made it difficult for him to empathize with people. And because of that, he built his own little world in his head, just like Chris Chan does. Uh, just like most lol cows do. I mean, you can look at movie Bob. He's basically doing the same thing. He's created this bizarre world in his head where he's a member of the elite who are being held back by the unwashed masses. Um... It's and, just and bigger we're, we're, than Bob, We're talking about a guy who like sucker punch. I mean, come on. Right. Or like Dark Side Phil has put himself in a place where he's always the victim. He's the victim of this this gang stalking, basically. But <laughs> he almost kind of is because he does have a crowd of you idiots just watching, watching to laugh at him. But no one makes him do the stupid shit he does. He just does it on his own and then he puts it out there. That, yeah. It's but deep down Movie Bob knows what he is. He's an idiot who lives in a basement and talks about movies. Deep down, Dark Side Phil knows that these people who are making fun of him are the only thing keeping him alive. Yeah. Deep down, Andrew Blaze knows Ember McLean's not real. He knows he's not a transsexual ghost brony. All right? He knows who he really is, and he is crafting the narrative to make himself feel as interesting as he believes he really is. So would you say Chris Chan is doing the same thing? Definitely. Okay. Uh, Chris Chan's a little more literal because he's actually writing it down, but it's the same basic principle of these people live boring lives and they have no motivation, so instead they just create the world that they believe except is... they're they're not creative so it's just a hodgepodge of other people's bullshit yeah like 200 years ago stephen king would be the same way he'd just be some psychopath who stands hey. out in the field and hey, talks stephen about king. the man in black 
Stephen King's not a bad writer. He just has written so much shit. No one's going to be perfect that many times. I'm not saying he's bad. I'm saying all writers are the same. Like, in modern society, they have an outlet. But 200 years ago, Stephen King would just be uh, fucking around in the town square talking about nonsense. Yes. You don't understand. I'm shining at you. Don't you see it? Don't you see the thoughts coming out of my head and into yours? Don't mind him. That's just Stevie. He's the town queer. I don't think... <laughs> Why are they Bostonian? I, uh, everyone was Bostonian 200 years ago, David. <laughs> That's not how the past works, Dylan, anyway. That's how it should. <laughs> so he is structured to himself. And part of this, the reason part of this is so hard to discern is because he's basing some of it on mental health. Like, that's how a lot of our stories are written now is anytime something weird happens to a character in the story, they're like, oh, I'm crazy. If you're going to write a story in that style in real life, you're going to try to make it look like you're actually crazy, but you know you're not crazy. You know you're seeing the elves that no one else can see. Right. Uh, that's what I'm coming across here. You accept that Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold were not crazy. They were just awful people, right? Yes. Yes, I do. That's what I'm. That's the point I'm trying to make here. Randy Stair is not crazy. Like you're a first in the class, you're like, well, he has to be crazy because he has a ghost girlfriend. He doesn't. He's making it up. He didn't have a a, a Dylan Klebold to shovel all his shit onto, so you had to make a ghost up to make to do it. Okay, I get it. And let's be honest. That's what all ghosts are. It's just, oh, I don't want to deal with my mortality, so I want you to make this thing up, and I'll shove all those awful thoughts over here, and that thing can deal with them. And I don't have to worry about how the afterlife works, because I know there's a ghost. And I know that, well, there's more, so I don't have to worry that much about it now. It's like when you, uh... It's like when you go to make food and it's like when you go to a buffet and you put food on your plate and you're like, well, I know I don't need more, but there's so much of it. It's okay. If I take more. Yes. It's like that. That's what I'm saying. Randy stairs, ghost wife, who is like a buffet. That's what I'm saying. That's what we're going to call this episode. Randy Stairs ghost waifu is like a buffet that is a terrible yeah. name for anything. That's the best that's the best title. That's what we're gonna name it. It's gonna be great. Point is uh Randy Stairs is not crazy. Uh he's also another point I want to make, he's not depressed. I feel we've been very open about our own issues with uh depression, with mental health. I think our fandom, our very small, humble fandom, has been very open with each other about uh, problems with mental health. It's a very common issue. Yes, yes, and very much so. The thing to remember about depression is people who are depressed turn their hate inward. It's, why am I not good enough? Why am I not good enough for someone to love? Why am I not good enough for this job? What's wrong with me? Randy Stair, okay. Eric Harris, Dylan Klebold, Onision, these people have anti-personality disorders where they turn it outward. Why don't these people see how good I am? Why don't these people understand how much better I am than them? Why don't these people get that I'm someone they should strive to be? And that resentment builds up, and they cannot empathize with other people because they see them as below them. When Randy Stair walked into that supermarket and shot people he had worked with for years, he had worked at that supermarket for seven years. When he did that, in his mind, it was like he was going into like a barnyard and shooting sheep. He just doesn't have the emotional connection in his head to understand the visceral feeling of why what he's doing is wrong. He understood why it was illegal. He understood he was ending people's lives. He knew that they had families. He knew who they were. They weren't just random people. 
but he wanted to inflict pain on them the same way a serial killer, when it's young, will set squirrels on fire. Because they just want to see him suffer. Because it's the only emotion they know. Those, these spiteful feelings he's felt his whole life. Because he but, can't connect. But unlike them. a traditional serial killer, he hasn't lived this horrible life. Most serial killers are products of their environment. Randy Stair is not. By all accounts, Randy Stair lived a great life. He had uh, a mom and dad who loved him. He had a brother who he seemed to get along well with. That's one of the most surprising things about his tapes, is how happy he sounds all the time. He sounds like, he talks about these things like, oh, it was fucking awful. But then he actually will say like, yeah, me and my brother sat down and talked, uh, and it was really nice. You know, we really connected that one time. And it's very surreal to listen to. Because he's almost... He's almost giving himself excuses not to go through with it. But he's not following up on any of them. Hmm. Here's another thing I kind of want to highlight. Or well, let me go back to you. What's the, what would you say is the, ne is the next big thing people talk about whenever there's a mass shooting? Uh... Well, I mean, so, so we already mentioned mental illness. Right. It's, uh, let's rule that one out. What's the next big thing people talk about whenever there's a shooting incident? Criminal record? He didn't have a criminal record, I don't believe. But no, like when they're like, what, what do all the politicians start drumming up whenever this shit happens? Religion? Or violent media? I was, uh, I was moving towards gun violence. Okay. Uh, so, you know, well, Randy Stair shouldn't have had this gun to begin with. And if he didn't have this gun, he wouldn't have been able to perpetrate this event. Okay. Uh, Randy had that were, I believe, both Mossberg 500s. I believe is the title of the gun. They are shit fucking guns. They are like two to three hundred dollars. Uh... They cost less than a guitar does. And he, first off, he scratched the names of his waifus into his guns, which is the gayest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. Uh, but I mean, wouldn't you still like, okay, it, 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 we're not talking about assault rifles, we're just talking about guns, period. Like, isn't that still... Uh, so the reason I brought that up, Randy didn't buy the guns himself. He convinced his mother to buy them for him. And he convinced her because he told her, hey, I'm at the house by myself all the time. What if something happens? I need some way to defend myself. Right? Well, isn't that still the and same he... argument? He, he basically guilted his mom into buying these guns for him. Uh, and then he also used his car in the attack. He barricaded the front doors with his car. He set up, like, pallets at the emergency exits so no one could use them. And he was planning to use uh, propane tanks in the store during his attack, which I don't think worked out for him because you can't just shoot a propane tank and have it explode, you dumbass. It's not how it works. It's not a video game. That's true. That's not how it works. The point being here is he had planned for months to do this. Like, But he it sounds he like used, he's an idiot and didn't actually... He planned for months for a fictional thing. He underestimated how difficult it is to actually kill someone, uh, even with a shotgun, when the shotgun is shit. Uh, had he not had access to the guns, he would have, like, made home explosives, or he would have just used a knife. He was dedicated to... It wasn't like, again, it's not like he had a psychotic break and he already had a gun. He was dedicated to causing pain sure. before he took his own life. Yeah, okay. He would have found any way to do that he could have. And keep in mind, he only killed three people to begin with. 
Uh, he shot 60 rounds. The Mossbergs can only have five or six shells in them at a time. Oh my god, he reloaded a lot. He reloaded, he probably reloaded more than you reload while actually playing a first person shooter. Like, I bet if you actually count how many times you reload the next time you play Overwatch, I bet you'll reload less than he did. I don't know, I reload a lot. He also didn't have a tactical visor, though, so his aim was a lot worse. Yeah, clear. Well, he fired 60 rounds. And how many times did he shoot the people he killed, do we know? Oh, I, I don't believe those specifics have been put out there. Uh, I'm not really interested in them to begin with, though. I, I imagine it was a one-shot kind of deal, though. If so, uh, the I'm also at rounds, he just kind of whiffed. And uh, he might not. He might have just been because it was where he used to work. So he might have actually just been just fucking shit up. Shit. He, yeah. yeah, he might not have been trying. That's true. Fuck. And man. I'm trying to find out if he killed himself in the store or if he did make it back to his house to do it. Uh, I don't think they've released that information yet. Uh, he his plan was he wanted to go back to his house and die quote unquote surrounded by his girls imagine this is how you go out imagine this is how you die this guy gets you uh, uh, and uh, keep in mind joke. Uh, the victims were not young uh, one of the victims was 60 one of the victims was 40, and I know, for, I know one of them at least was a single mom. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, like, ima like imagine that kid. That kid is living the life that uh, Randy made up in his head for himself. He's going to live that tortured existence that Randy was desperate to live. And he's probably going to come out like a, a better person for it. I don't know how old the kid was. Um, but if the mom's 40, the kid's probably like 12 or 13 by now. At minimum. Yeah. Uh, which is right around the age of puberty, so this is going to fuck him up sexually for the rest of his life. <laughs> Moving on. Because that's what... That's what that, because that's what happened to Randy. He had this. He had his sexual awakening to this cartoon character, and he misinterpreted it as like a spiritual one. Hormones. Well, except you think he's making all of this shit up. So I think I think he is making it up, but I think that just he was thinking about it for so long. Um. If he's, if he had been, like if he, what you're saying is is he's been jerking off to Ember. Since he learned, he learned how to jerk off with Ember, is what you're telling me. Yeah, like, if he had had his sexual awakening to, like, a Natalie Portman movie, he would have, like, been stalking her in Hollywood by now. Okay. But his waifu of, ch his, his lover of choice was a cartoon that no one remembers. I think and a lot of people remember Danny Phantom. But no one remembers Ember. I, honest cool. to God, I thought the character's name was Amber until I spell-checked it before we actually started this video. Okay, then yeah, I would probably be in the same position. Okay. Also, someone pointed out that there's an episode of Danny Phantom that takes place in the future, and Amber gets all fat. And I don't think he ever talks about it, but I'm curious how he felt about it. Uh, if you go looking for information on this, you're going to see a lot of jokes about going ghost. Oh my god, that's horrible. <laughs> that's Danny Phantom's little... Uh... Yes, it's his catchphrase for when he activates his ghost powers. Uh, someone on the Discord said we should call this episode Going Ghostal. <laughs> oh, Which fuck. Is... It's a pretty strong title. I think we should have his. I think we should aim in it at I, least, or else I, I would use it. Too, I think it's too offensive. I think it's it's the perfect title, but it's too offensive. 
It's pretty good, though. Oh, I keep forgetting points I was trying to make here. God damn it. This is the Game Grumps episode all over again. It, it's, it's calling it Going Ghostal is like calling a Twin Peaks podcast like Laura Palmer's Corpse instead of like the most tasteful version of that like wrapped in plastic, you know? Like, it's, it's, too, it's too on the nose. Wrapped in plastic is a great name for a Twin Peaks podcast. What are you talking about? I'm, no, no, I'm saying like that's that's the good way of doing it. I'm saying if you didn't do it that well, oh, you do the bad version of it. Huh. Going ghostal is the bad version, but but it's a dumb fun, <sighs> so we love it. So the base point here: Randy Stair was looking to cause pain. It doesn't matter if he had the guns or not. He was going to find a way to do it. His obsession could have been with anything. It's like the dude. It's like the dude who stabbed those that those people in Portland. Yeah, his his obsession was with Islam. Well, yeah, but well, no, because he stabbed those people because they told him to stop. Right. That's why he stabbed them. So like, it's it it had, he just wanted to hurt someone. And when people tried to defend someone he was trying to hurt verbally, he decided to hurt them physically. Do you remember the lady who played uh, Phoenix in the original X-Men movies? She got, like, a couple of years ago, someone, like, broke into her house and left, like, a doll of her. And, like, a note, like, that said, like, thinking of you or something. Okay. That's who Randy Stare would be. If he had watched the uh, X Men movies, okay. Also, his, his sexual. We're talking, we're talking about the mom from Taken. Yes, his awakening could have been anything, and it just happened to be this. And I think for most people, I think a lot, that's more common these days than you'd think. I think most people have like their sexual awakening is now, like a fictional thing, you know. Yes. Uh, and for for most of them, it just leads to like of a certain type of person. But with Randy, who couldn't empathize with normal people, so he couldn't transfer those feelings to other, anyone else, he was stuck obsessing over this one character that continuously fell into obscurity for him. Okay. This is, my, this is the main point I'm trying to, to make here, I believe. Um... And Randy uh, was a very sexual person, even if he couldn't, even if he claims he never wanted a relationship with anyone, he also claims that he would uh, masturbate perpetually, and sometimes he would masturbate in class. Ew. Like, he would, in his words, he would just sort of stick his hand in his pocket, and it would take him a while, but after, if he was diligent enough, he could get stuff to happen. That's horrible. It just sounds uncomfortable, honestly. Oh, it sounds it's gross. Like so he just kept jizzing in his pants. Yeah, I guess. And he Who he would do it that? in like He had to have been doing this in like 12th period or something, you know. So he has to deal with it for the rest of the day. Wait, 12th period? That's that's A too many periods and B Sorry, I mean that would, that would be at the end of the day. Sorry, I was thinking of twelve. I was thinking of twelve o'clock, like at noon. It's like fourth period. <laughs> yeah, idiot. that's not more appropriate. I was like, it was twelfth period, and then there's first and second and third period, right? Eight, that's how that works. Eight is usually the most periods they have. If there's that many, I think uh, I think girls have twelve periods, don't they? Aren't they supposed to at least? Yes. <laughs> Shut up. Okay, moving on. Uh, what else is here? There's not really a whole lot left to Randy Stare. Um, in his suicide tapes, he talks a lot about people he used to know, but the more that we delve into this, the less important it becomes. Uh, he talks about how he had some friends in college. Uh... Or he had to take an editing class in college. And through that editing class, he learned about some local bands that he actually got really into. 
And uh, I think he became really good friends with one of the dudes in the class. Uh, and that guy ended up dying in a car accident over winter break, and he didn't find out for like a month. Uh, and I'm pretty sure had that guy not died, I don't think Randy Stair would have gone on his uh, rampage. Because Randy Stair, more than anything, he wanted attention. I think he was starved for that personal connection to other people. But he only knew negative connections to people. And he didn't want to actually talk to anyone. And it's clear when you're listening to his tapes, he's putting a lot of emphasis on talking to people. Or he's putting a lot of emphasis that the cartoons he's making are going to be his connection to humanity. That he's going to be at least semi-popular through his cartoons. And I'm pretty sure, had this other kid been alive, they would have stayed, like, at least semi-decent friends, and he would have felt personally sated. Uh, alternatively, had someone found his shitty cartoons before his attack, and had, like, people on Kiwi Farms or people on 4chan started fucking with him, like they do with Jahan's, or like they do with Chris Chan, I also think he would have put off the attack. I think he would have decided against it, because now he was getting his personal satisfaction here. So you believe. Basically what you're saying is, is, is we're seeing a person who wanted to be a lull cow, and couldn't even put in the effort to do that, so we're instead seeing, he did this. We're seeing a person who was desperate for attention of any kind. Uh, even post-humorous attention. And had he gotten it, even if it was just people insulting him, he would have been sated. Like but I it said, because like, he did, he didn't. By the time he actually put in the effort to like make his cartoons and stuff, he had already decided to kill people. No, so he was making the cartoons for the last few years. It was only okay. in like December when he was making the last video he had decided to kill, at least definitively. That's what we know. Okay. Uh, he puts his character, he puts his character's suicide date as like June 15th, 2015 or something, which some people interpret as him deciding that since then he was planning suicide or since then he was planning his attack. But all we know for certain is since December of 2016, he was planning the attack. Okay. Uh, and I, I, I mean, I so said this earlier, but... Jerry Pete is getting that negative attention. So he's not going on his vi on the violent man pages, but if he wasn't getting that, I think it was only a matter of time before he did. Uh, so, so, but what was, so, John, sir, sorry. So Andrew Blaze was making these cartoons. Was he like putting them up though? Like were, were, was no one just paying attention? He was getting, he had a very, very minuscule fandom. He had a fandom that's probably smaller than ours. Uh, his videos were getting like two to three hundred views. He did get like fan art and like other edgelords on like Tumblr and Twitter would like submit shit to him. Recognize a couple things is relationships on the internet don't matter as much as relationships in real life. That's true. It's just a fact. You don't get the same emotional return from someone you know on a website that you would get from someone you know in real life. And I say that as someone who, at this point, primarily has his friendships through the internet. It's just the way we work now. But even That's so, true. I get roughly as much emotional satisfaction out of my coworkers I talk to sometimes as I do with the people that I, some of the people I talk to in our Discord channel. And I, 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 I would agree. So, when I say one person could have sated him in real life, even two, even like six or seven on the internet wouldn't have been enough. He would have needed more. Okay. He would have needed to get like two or three hundred minimum. And those would all have to be as active as those six. Like, uh, when you look at 
It's like, again, with Dark Side Phil, he so has, he like... To be a Dark Side Phil is what you're telling me. He, yeah, he would have loved that. He wanted, like, that, like a, a group of people who are very connected to him, and then he wanted, like, a greater group who are passerbys who maybe gawk at him, but he was fine with it. He just wanted the attention. He was desperate for it. And in a weird way, he got it once he, uh... Once he, yeah... But uh, I know a lot of people, uh, and this was even brought up in the Discord, will say that this is done in poor taste. That the bodies aren't even in the ground yet. Um, it's I, it's too soon. I mean, I thought it was too soon. In uh, when I knew the, the the very basic facts of this case, that whatever basically that our subject killed three people. And it happened, you know, like this month. But but getting more of the details, I, I agree with you, actually. I don't think this is in poor taste because I, I feel like we need to say this now before before what happened to Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris happens to Andrew Blaze. Like, he's not a tortured soul. He's just an asshole who decided to take it to the next level. He's like, just a human monster. Who, he, he needs to be held up as a monster before b- before someone can idolize him like they like he idolized Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris. Whatever disorders he might have had would not have made him a killer. He himself took the steps to make those decisions. And uh, more importantly, it's I don't believe it's in poor taste because the myth that the media built around Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold had a direct connection to this. The almost heroism that they gave to the two of them as these nerds striking back against society directly fed the ego of Randy Stare. And he knew that wasn't true. When he talks about these two, he talks about them as they were, which was monsters. But nonetheless... Had society looked at them with ridicule instead of sympathy, I don't think this would have happened. And I think a lot of the other ones wouldn't have happened either. I know a lot of people take the stance of don't ever say the perpetrator's name. Don't just wipe them from history and focus on the victims and sympathy. But I think it's equally as valid, which is just ridicule these people for what they are, because that's what he is. Like, there's nothing Randy Stare dealt with that I don't deal with in my life, that you don't deal with in your life. He had a mediocre job, but it was a job. He was a college graduate. Uh, I believe he had a degree in, like, film editing or something, but he didn't want to go into that career field because it would have been hard. Um... He had people on the internet who he could talk to, and he was capable of making friends. He just didn't want to. So, so and, what I what I think you're saying is is Randy Stare was, was when people like try to shit on millennials. For, oh, they're so lazy, they have no aspirations, they don't want to do anything. That's usually not true. What they're actually talking about is someone like Randy Sayer, who has been given every chance and is just such a piece of shit. Like, just such a... Like, I, I, like in a way that, like, I don't, I don't know how you fix someone like this. It's like, an... an it's, like, he's right, he needed a friend, but the reason he didn't have a friend was because he didn't want to be bothered with trying to get a friend. That's another thing I really want to stress here. Randy was 24. He was an adult. He was out of college. He had graduated. He had finished schooling. He had a job. He had a full-time job that he was seemingly okay with. Was he living at home, or was he living on his own? I think he was living at home, but I think he was capable of living on his own if he really wanted to. Okay. It was no one's responsibility to take care of Randy but him. No one had to get him to the doctor. No one had to make sure that he was doing okay. All right? When, if you have mental health problems, you have to take care of them. You're not a victim 
It's not society that needs to pick you up out of the dirt and brush you off and make sure you feel okay. No, if you have issues, you need to go to the doctor and make sure that you can try to take care of them. And at People this don't point, understand. And at this point, we, we, they, with this happening, you know, this year, it's not like, oh, you know, this was – the mental health conversation still isn't great in the United States. But it's not that like you can't blame it on that either. I think at this point, <laughs> like he, he, it's much much better than it even was of the generation that goes to therapy. Like it's not like it's this taboo anymore for our generation. It's mental health issues are definitely talked about more openly than they ever have been in America for the better. Yes. I believe. Yeah, for the no no one hundred percent for the better. It's people don't seem to like you don't understand that when the doctors ask you questions like, well, how's the medication working? It's because they don't know. It's because humans aren't robots. They're not iPads and iPhones. They don't have exact parts. You everyone's chemistry is slightly different. So if a medication doesn't work, it's not because they're poisoning you. It's because with your chemical makeup, you're not working right. So they need to find you a better one. And a lot of people are like, no, just give me the pills that you give everyone. That's not how it works. You have to take a proactive part in making sure your health is maintained. And Randy Sayer didn't want to do that. He was explicit in his tapes. He says, oh, I have to be careful. I have to make sure that I don't slip up because the moment my parents suspect something, they'll make me go to a doctor. We're doing everything for him. So I, you see people and they're like, why didn't anyone catch any of these red flags? They did. Randy was a manipulator. He wanted these. Randy he didn't want people people to know. He knew they were flags. He was and he was a fucking adult. Action. Yeah. And he's a fucking adult. It's not my job to take care of Randy. It's not your job to take care of Randy. It's his job, all right? And it's the most irritating thing in the world because it's something that people always do. It's something that I've done quite a bit in my life. And I'm sure people listening at home have probably done it of, well, I feel bad. But I'm not going to say anything until someone asks me. Like, no, you have to tell people that you feel bad. You have to tell the world that you're not doing very good and that you want someone to help you. Because otherwise, they're not going to. As, as sucky as it is, you have to take the first steps to making your brain not stupid. But all you got to do is ask, and people will help. <laughs> Most people are open. Most people want to help. When you confide in like a friend or something, it makes them feel special. Yes. Most people are actively interested in being someone's support system. As long as you try. Which Randy Stair didn't. Because he didn't want a support system. He wanted an excuse to go on a rampage. And he would have taken any excuse he had. And that's more or less it from those tapes. But as we've delved into this, little of it matters. Um, it doesn't really matter who his other characters were. So much as it matters that it was all a lie to him. I, I feel like we've covered the heart of this much better than we can care cover the word. Uh so I think it's as good a place as any to kind of end with sick. He wasn't a victim. He wasn't oppressed. He was a monster who would have taken any excuse to inflict pain upon other people. He could have killed himself and have existed in his little ghost squad and nothing. We would have never even heard about it. We certainly wouldn't be doing the episode, but he chose to go into that market and to kill three other people who had families who are now lost without them. At least one of whom uh, left a child behind. So we're past the stage of empathy for him. Fuck, man. What a piece of shit. Yeah, he's bad. He's pretty. This is the worst. This is the worst guy we've ever talked about. I know. I feel like I say that somewhat often. This is the worst. I don't think we're going to talk about murderers anytime soon. No. Again. No. Well, I don't know. Also, so 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 if 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 child molesters are worse than murderers, 
what is the scale? Like, how many how many people do you have to be murdered murder to be worse than someone who molested one child? I feel like you have to like specifically murder people who are like very innocent. Like you have to murder people who have lived a fairly long life life of altruism. You gotta like be one of the people from the Devil's Rejects. Although they're all rapists too, so that kind of defeats the point. Wait, what? They are. No, 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 I know that, but I don't understand how that comparison works for what we were talking about. Because I'm saying, like, you have to, like... Because in... Well, I guess we don't know that for sure, but in The Devil's Rejects, they just attack that old family for no reason. Well, yeah, but they're monsters, but we're talking... I'm saying, how many people do you have to murder before you're worse than a child molester? <sighs> just two? Does, I... does, does, does two... Is it just an increasing oh, scale? It's always just one more than the other? I think it's more important who you murder. Because if you murder, like, a, th- a hundred Nazis, I don't think... I think, like... I think someone who murders one, like, teacher is worse than someone who kills a hundred Nazis. Okay. If he's killing them because they're Nazis. But, but so then... then the, but then the child molester is worse than both. Because the, the murders are Nazis. But if you kill two teachers, who's worse? What if you uh, child molest a Nazi? Where do you fall on the scale then? (laughs) I feel like the only response to that is two wrongs still don't make a right. Okay. You give okay. What if a guy has a time machine and he goes back and he rapes young Hitler? Is that okay, or is that too (laughs) far? I feel like the only correct response to that was, well, what is it, what if is it, what if that happens? Wouldn't that be an explanation for why Hitler became how he was? Okay, so you have a guy. He can go. He's the only guy who can go back in time to kill Hitler, but that you have to let him rape him first. Do you let him? As a baby, like as a child. As, a, as you, you have to... Does it matter the time period? He just has to be raped the, the The older he is, the more likely he is to be stopped. Because he, he has to rape to completion. So, and then, so it has to be done before... Basically what you're saying is, is, is Hitler will have to be raped before he becomes the monster that made him the, the number one video game enemy since video games existed. <laughs> Like if you if you have him rape Hitler while he's in office, he's all, he's gonna have a whole bunch of guards around, so they're more likely to bust in and see it happening and stop it. But if he rapes him as a child, no one's gonna stop him. It's German again. So, so what I'm saying is, is you have to do it before he became the monster. He doesn't so like before he, he doesn't, was responsible of his crimes. Let's say let's let's For, let's simplify this, and we'll say that the assassin has to rape Hitler to death. Because <laughs> he goes back like a Terminator. He goes back in the nude. That's all he has. I feel like the answer would be still yes. You go back to where that uh, famous painting is taken of the guy carrying Hitler and you just push him into the mud. <laughs> and you tell him, don't Hitler. And then you go back. I, I, we, we, how did the story change? Join us next that? episode. Join us next episode when we talk about Onision, uh, internet cultist and all around shitbag. Not quite as big of a shitbag as Randy Stair, but he's pretty bad. Did, did are we peaking early? Already? Again? Maybe. Again? Did we peak again? Perhaps. I guess we'll find out. All right. Bye, everyone. Arms comes out tomorrow. Shut up. <laughs>